Hello everybody, um, my name is Stephanie and I have my colleague with me, Esther, from DLR in Germany. But um, before I start my presentation on the scientific dimension, we are going to present a short video um, uh, hello to you uh, from our colleagues from uh, Argentina, which have, of course, had a very important role in the project of our scientific dimension. Published. 
and the other ones are under preparation. So we have been quite productive, as I think. So, but we have not only done analysis um, and desktop analysis, we have also um, conducted interviews. So ask people and uh, funding agencies or uh, ministries of both regions um, on how they perceive uh, bi-regional cooperation. And this was quite interesting because these are the people who really carry um, the, the system and the activities. Uh, this, is, this report um, summarizes our findings and um, finally we came out with seven actions that uh, and to us seem to be uh, helpful for the future by regional cooperation in science. So um, these all activities were um, conducted by a, a team in Germany, uh, which is represented by me and uh, Esther. The main colleagues who really did the main work, Sophie, I think many uh, of you know her, um, she's not here, she, she left the project a while ago, and Jenny also. So um, uh, they are here. For so they really did the work, most of the work. And of course, uh, mobility is, um, the, the topic of uh, our colleagues from Austria, uh, Simone Belli from, um, he's an Italian researcher who worked in Ecuador, Yachai, and now moved to Madrid, so he's obviously in Madrid, or I don't know, it's bad that he cannot be here. So this, this was uh, the main team of uh, this uh, work. So just to give you um, a, a very short overview on, on the um, bi-regional system in research and innovation, uh, which, as was mentioned before, is well established. So it started in uh, 2004 um, at a bi-regional summit. So the bi-regional knowledge area was established. Then at the Madrid summit in 2010, uh, the uh, joint initiative um, for in research and innovation, the GRE was established, including an action plan. And uh, following up on this, um, a system of regular meetings of senior officials, so representatives of uh, ministries and councils, was established and they met uh, until two years ago regularly, uh, once every year. Uh, unfortunately, this, um, this uh, system or this regular meetings have been extended um, for the moment being uh, due to the uh, political situation uh, in its way that problematics and so we hope that this will recover and uh, start again hopefully next year. And um, yes, in uh, 2016 uh, the bi-regional research area was established. It was um, pronounced um, by a commissioner, the former commissioner Boydash and um, um, since then, we have uh, the bi-regional research area, which is um, a, a very important framework for all the activities. Okay, so this this picture, this picture also, it's not about details, but it gives you uh, um, an insight or an overview on um, the fact that Latin American institutions are using the framework programs of the European Union quite. So um, the framework programs of the European Union um, are one of the main funding sources for, for bioregional cooperation. And um, in spite of that we have that the uh, bioregional research, the common research area was established, we saw that um, the, the participation diminished from the framework, the seventh framework program current framework program, but this was not because of lack of interest or lack of potential or whatever. It was just due to um, mostly administrative uh, procedures. And the projects uh, grew bigger and so it was more difficult uh, from an administrative reason for Latin Americans to be involved. Um, I said that we conducted interviews um, and um, I will um, pick, uh, or come back to this later. But here um, I would like to point out um, uh, two aspects. Um, so the, um, the senior officials, the representatives of the ministries of both regions, they were asked what are uh, the best practice, um, what works well in bioregional cooperation, 
what uh, and what doesn't work well, and what are the main challenges. So the main challenges, if I, I think maybe you can read it, but um, it's lack of financial resources. It's that simple. So that's these are the main um, uh, hurdles and uh, challenges, and uh, the representatives of uh, luck are the green ones, and the uh, yellow ones are from Europe, so they are they have the same thing, and this, this is very clear. So here, uh, just um, to give you uh, an overview of the common research area, it has uh, three pillars. Uh, one is mobility, which uh, was highlighted several times. Uh, the other ones are the research infrastructures. And the third pillar um, are uh, the global challenges. Okay. So we look, in our project, we look at best practices. We identify best practices. And uh, one of the best practices is uh, the IQNA project. It's um, um, a project funded by the EC, which uh, had the objective to support the bi-regional uh, dialogue and to enhance bi-regional uh, cooperation in research and innovation. This project was uh, coordinated by Argentina. That's why they played an important role and still do. And it was a best it, it was a best practice because the, the project ended in 2017 because it integrated uh, the LUC partner institutions. They had active roles in it and they um, they um, use they come up with um, thematic working groups which involve experts from both regions and they jointly um, define joint priorities. So um, defining joint priorities, integrating uh, partners, uh, as many partners from both region, and networking, these are the, the really success uh, stories or factors of, of this uh, project. And what is still existing, although the project has ended, is an, um, a network of um, NCPs, national contact points. Uh, so these contact points in, inform about the, um, the programs um, of the or the funding opportunities of the, uh, the current framework programs and the future framework program, and thus enhancing uh, um, the involvement of Latin American partners. So if they, if they have a problem, if they want to find partners from Europe, if they want to know how to administer such a project, they ask their national NCPs and uh, um, get some answers and are motivated to get involved in new funded projects. And this network is still um, existing and is maintained by Uruguay. Then um, the Aranet, luck, uh, the, there was an Aranet um, also funded by the Commission. And the aim of this project was to, um, to get, uh, to bring funding agencies from both regions together and make them decide about uh, topics and get um, involved in joint funding activities. And this was really uh, very, very um, successful because, again, it also integrated small countries. For example, Bolivia, which wasn't um, in this project from the beginning, or on, on the European side, Romania, which maybe is not the, the main country you think of um, if you think of uh, EU and LAC cooperation. They, they found it very interesting uh, what this area was doing, and they got involved, and they joined uh, the second and the third joint call, which was uh, organized by this airman group. Um, so networking again, integration, and um, joint agenda setting what were the success factors. And um, after the Airnet Lab uh, project ended, in also in 2017, we, um, the group, the whole group decided to continue with the activities, and uh, we call ourselves interest group. We will have interest group now, and we, uh, we are planning to have a uh, next call uh, early next year. Then, um, do we have some more minutes? Um, I try to be quicker. Um, I said research infrastructures and linking uh, research infrastructures from EU and Latin America is, is a very important, is one of the focal activities of, uh, of both regions currently, but it's not as easy because uh, we have a very well-established uh, system of, your, uh, of research infrastructures in Europe, 
And in Latin America, there are research infrastructures, but it's it's not a, a joint approach. And they and uh, looking at the definition, what is a research infrastructure, is, is very difficult. So this um, this working group started by um, informing each other what's the current situation, mapping. Um, um, research infrastructures on the Latin American side also um, produce a process of a joint agenda setting. What are your problems? How can we support you? How can you learn from Europe? So this is, um, these are the activities from the working group and um, it's been going on for one and a half years and it's, it's, you can see successes. And um, so um, I think this will be, um, you will hear of this in the future, I'm quite confident. The UXS uh, network, worldwide um, network, um, has the objective of informing um, researchers in Brazil um, on uh, programs of the EU. So it's, it's um, targeting EU uh, researchers which are living in Brazil and maybe are interested in uh, getting or staying attached to Europe or maybe getting back to Europe but also addressing Brazilians who are interested in maybe spending uh, some, some years um, and getting attached to, to um, European researchers. And it, it opened up to uh, the whole region. So starting from Brazil, they are opening up now and um, it's very important because they um, inform and make uh, the European research um, area more visible in Latin America. Um, Okay, so um, I said, uh, I talked about success factors, I talked about integration, mutual learning, training, um, well, joining uh, uh, the joint projects, uh, increasing visibility both of uh, Europe and Latin America, but also the yeah, other, other direction, creating synergies, with, um, because as you might understand, there are a lot of uh, initi initiatives going on already, and it's important to link them and to learn from each other. Align uh, strategies and joint agenda setting, these are very important factors. So now um, I will come to innovation next. Because if you look at these, uh, at these political statements, research and innovation are always linked. And research is relatively easy to establish. Uh, it's you, you fund joint projects and uh, researchers collaborate with each other. It's, it's relatively easy and successful. Innovation is really another thing. And this is um, based on uh, the different traditions uh, in Europe and in Latin America in order to support and enhance innovation. Uh, in Europe, I mean, there has been a long tradition of policy of national governments funding innovation activities and bringing academia and industry together. And industry is um, funding research to a very large extent. In Latin America, this movement is growing. This understanding of the importance of industry also getting involved in research and enhancing inno innovation is, is growing step by step. But it's not, it's not really established. So this, this is a really challenge if you want to bring innovation systems of both regions together. And our, I mean, we don't have a secret recipe to, uh, to solve the problem, but we, um, our conclusion is that you, you really have, again, to learn from each other, to, to look at uh, initiatives which, uh, which are funded by um, the European Commission um, in, in this uh, um, innovation sector, it's, it's by other um, uh, general um, directorates. Um, so um, they fund, for example, um, the, um, they, uh, the, they fund uh, that SMEs from Latin America get involved in Europe and uh, they try to connect innovative uh, actors um, from both regions. But this, this is not yet part of this common research area, which, is, which was invented by the um, General Directorate of, um, for Research. So this would be our uh, recommendation. In, insert innovation as a, a, a transversal um, area, 
learn from other initiatives, learn from other uh, directorates which have started with uh, funding certain initiatives and um, step by step, well, you will improve um, the innovation collaboration also on a regional level. So I, in the beginning I told you about seven actions which we uh, suggested um, for the future. Uh, I will not go into details, um, you can read our synthesis report, but the, the action five, six and seven, they also tackle innovation, so they suggest to, to link um, academia research um, activities with innovation actors and as I said, uh, to learn from each other. And Action 7 is uh, especially interesting, I think, the, the um, um, activities to promote science diplomacy is something which is quite interesting. It is about visibility and uh, scientists learn how to sell what they do um, and sell it to politicians, of course, but not only to politicians, but also to industry, um, to companies, in order to um, to motivate them to get engaged and to collaborate. So I think this is, this is quite an interesting essay. So thank you very much.